So I'm Jack Johnson. I'm the executive director um, and co-founder of the Fabry Support and Information Group, an organization dedicated to helping individuals across the country with uh, Fabry disease. We started in 1996, have uh, grown tremendously over the years, and um, have members in I think every state, as well as well over 45 countries, I believe, um, around the globe. My background with Fabre, um, I have a long history in my family. We're able to trace it back five generations on my uh, mother's grandfather or my mother's dad's side of the family and on back. Uh, so, so have uh, uh, quite a lot of experience from family members, and, and I also am a Fabry patient. So that kind of gives you a, a quick overview of, of myself and my background. Our services that we offer mainly starting off was um, just information and advocacy uh, and uh, mutual uh, self-help connecting individuals together and so forth. We've uh, hosted, I don't know how many hundred plus meetings over the years across the United States um, to uh, help bring the community together to, to hear from the experts, uh, the physicians, and, and uh, about clinical trials and so forth that are being offered. And we also do uh, national meetings every year. We, we move those around. Uh, we associate with the um, World Symposium, which is a, a huge medical meeting on lysosomal storage disorders. So we get uh, access to the newest and greatest information, access to the doctors to participate in our national conference. And then we are, every other year, we kind of bounce around and have one with World, and then we'll do another one somewhere else in the country in a, a, a different part time of the year. So we give everybody as, as much opportunity as possible to participate in those meetings. And we have many other uh, services. We have a you know, physician referral. We have financial assistance program. It, it, it's uh, small, but we're able to help out those um, with various needs that aren't captured so easily by some of the other assistance programs that are set up for longer term access to um, insurance premium coverage and, and those types of things. So uh, the, the BRIGHT study was looking at a different schedule of administration because, as we all know, that those uh, who are receiving enzyme replacement therapy, it, it can be a bit cumbersome and take some time. So this study was looking at the potential of administering treatment once a month instead of once every two weeks. So it uh, could really reduce the the burden of uh administration of treatment. So they, they did that study. They had uh, recently published uh, findings from that study. The, the data looks very promising, looks good. And hopefully, you know, they'll be able to get that to a, a, an approval for that for that label indication at some point with the FDA and the EMA and other locations around the world. So the once a month administration, it would be a larger dose than would be received. It would be twice the dose than what's received on the every two weeks, but it would only need to be done once a month. So that gives a great deal of flexibility, especially for individuals in the summer uh, months. So, you know, if they're wanting to take vacations or something like that, they don't have to interrupt their trip to come back and, and get an, um, an infusion or potentially uh, the benefit for young people going to college because having to take off time from school, if you're working, taking off time from work can be a big deal. Also, you know, for parents that can't afford to take a whole lot of time off because they're so busy with their kids and, and with work and stuff like that. And hopefully that this once a month administration can get approved for um, children at some point in the future too. And so it would be a great reduction in burden in their uh, enzyme infusion uh, you know, administration as well. Well, the, the, the next path is what, uh, how things are going to work out with the um, regulatory authorities. 
and the data will have to be submitted to, uh, which I believe it already has been, to the FDA, um, the, the European organization, approval organization, the EMA, and and others. And you have to meet their criteria and, and everything, and they can be satisfied with the data, get all of their questions answered, and so forth. So really, it's the company uh, that um, has all the details on that side of it. I just know the basic overview of how the process works. One of the uh, key things that uh, FSIG has you know, pushed for the very inception of our organization was that we wanted choice in therapy. We wanted people to be able to have multiple treatments that they could receive. And it's very exciting to have the uh, possibility of multiple administration approaches uh, so that people can tailor the medication to what works best for them, not only in the treatment that they receive, but also in how they receive it. And um, we're very excited to uh, see this moving forward to give yet another possibility for people to customize their own care. And that's very important for the patient community.